The fire at Grenfell left a profound effect on a whole community, not just those who suffered so terribly from its effects, but all those who came to their rescue that dreadful night in June. Many of the firefighters have sought counselling and support since then. 124 have received it directly. Another 500 or so have been contacted by London Fire Brigade's counselling and welfare teams. At its helm is Danny Cotton, the first ever female boss of the London Fire Brigade, who in her first year oversaw London's repeated terrorist attacks and Grenfell. Tonight, we speak to her and to one of her firefighters. Ricky Nuttall wrote an emotional poem in the week after Grenfell. It's the first time he's spoken publicly about what happened on the night and the impact it had on him. I still feel guilt and I, I think I will feel eternally guilty. When so many people, innocent people, lose their lives, it's very, very hard to take. I would defy anybody who attended that night not to have been affected in some way and it definitely did affect me. The whole incident was so overwhelming. You know, I've sort of gone to work one person and I've come back effectively a, a different person. With the police investigation and the inquiry ongoing, it's very rare for firefighters to speak publicly about what happened at Grenfell. Right, stretch around myself, we're both in the system. Start but this week, the London Fire Brigade gave Newsnight access to two staff members who were there. During yep. a training session at London's Chelsea Fire Station, we met Ricky Nuttall, a firefighter from Battersea Redwatch, who went into Grenfell more than once and the commissioner who led the operation that night. It was, it was immediately obvious how serious a fire it was and how bad a fire it was. You, know, you get called to a high-rise fire, you expect to see flames in a window, um, not multiple windows. I think for me the main image that will always last in my memory is when I first arrived and when I looked up at that building and thought to myself, this just can't be happening here. And for me the feeling of responsibility was absolutely enormous on that night. Um, you know, I haven't been backwards in coming forward without saying I went and sought counselling quite early with our counselling wellbeing team. I know that when I joined a very long time ago, you know, we didn't much talk about stuff because we just got on with stuff and actually that was the way it was and the watches were the way... We Most of the firefighters round this table attended the Grenfell fire. I saw uh, my council last week. Their commission has been open about the psychological impact of the experience on her and the LFB's had a mental health awareness drive to support its staff since the fire. I think the watch at the fire station are quite a very close watch and they've been there for each other and talked about things in great depth. 124 firefighters have received individual counselling directly related to Grenfell in the months since. You don't realise you're going through it. It's only when you start to come out the other side, you look back at how your mindset, how your attitude... For Ricky, Grenfell was the catalyst for his own mental health difficulties. He too is having counselling. It's the first time he's spoken to the media about what happened. The sheer scale of the incident was like nothing that I've ever seen before and that hopefully I will never see again. So any, any feelings after that, they, they sort of reared their heads at a, a later point, you know, in the, in the sort of the days and the weeks and the months afterwards. Did you hit a crisis point? I mean, how did, it, how did you realise? One morning I literally just sort of, I guess, had, had a form of a, of a breakdown. You know, I started crying and I couldn't stop for a good few hours. Um, and I phoned my girlfriend and I phoned my dad and I spoke to family and I'm, I'm very lucky there that I've got a very close family um, who I can rely on. But that was the moment really um, that I realised that I need some, I need, you know, this is, I'm not in a good place. I need some more help here. I was, I was offered um, by my GP when I spoke to my GP um, she asked me, you know, do you need some time off work? And to be honest with you, that's the last thing I wanted. I wanted to be at work, sort of speaking to people that have been, that, that were there at the incident with me and that, that have 
you know, got their own struggles and stuff because you, you, you sort of, you belong there, you know, they're like a second family. And how valuable has it been the fact that your boss, your top boss, Danny Cotton, has talked very openly about the counselling she's having? I think it's um, unquantifiably important. Um, I think it just reassures people that you, you say, okay, well, you know, I, I haven't got anything to be fearful of here. No one's going to sort of, you know, throw me on the scrap heap. I'm having some problems, but so is the key. Right. Ready when you guys are. More than half of a firefighter's working life is spent in training scenarios. It's been widely reported that the fire at Grenfell didn't behave as firefighters expected it to, but here they believe they were as prepared as they could have been. Casualties on the deck, keep paying out. You know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't apprehensive about going in, if I didn't feel a bit scared, but I felt confident in the capabilities of my equipment and, in, and the capabilities of myself through the training that I'd received and with the people that I'm going in with. You know, they're people that I work with m most days of the week for a lot of years. They're people that I trust with my life. The conditions themselves weren't too dissimilar to, to any others. The effort you had to put in was different because of the length of time you were in the incident for. You know, in a two-storey building, you're going up one flight of stairs. Going up a flight of stairs in a fire condition is hard work. It's hot, it's smoky, you have poor visibility. Going up one flight of stairs at Grenfell was exactly the same. The difference is that you've got to go up 20 flights of stairs or 15 flights of stairs, um, which obviously is much more taxing. Um, the conditions were, were very, very hard. After Grenfell, fire stations across London received an outpouring of support from the public. The horror of the tragedy affected so many, and there are questions about whether more lives could have been saved. Our filming was agreed on the basis that neither could talk about the specifics of what happened because of the ongoing investigation. But I did ask the commissioner about the stay put advice given to Grenfell residents. Do you ever, in the middle of the night, wake up as part of your and come into terms with this and think, did we give the right advice? Should we have told people to leave? I can't answer that. Because of the investigation? Because of the investigation. That is absolutely right, that's part of the investigation and it needs to come out as part of that, so, you know. But I mean, the whole purpose of what we do and the advice we give is normally based on an absolute sound set of principles about how buildings behave in fire. And, you know, the normal advice about staying inside if your flat's not affected is the right advice to give because that's what goes in day in, day out through the whole of the UK, you know, and that's the way that buildings should respond. So, but I just don't want to do anything to jeopardise the inquiry. It's really important to me that people get answers. You question yourself for weeks and for months after, did I do everything? Could I have pushed a bit harder? Could I have done anything different? And as long as, I think as long as you can answer those questions honestly to yourself and know that you couldn't have pushed any harder and know that you did do everything that you could and literally went out of your way as much as possible to help those people, which I did, and I'm happy and confident that I did, then I, at least whether the guilt's there or not, I can, I can square that way as unwarranted. For me, you know, it is about knowing that people gave their all. I mean, I saw firefighters who were lying on their ground, exhausted, completely and utterly drained and yet within 10 minutes they wanted to go back in and recommit and do it all over again because everybody just had that absolute sheer sense of purpose. My breaths were too few, my body exhausted, now mentally too. The silence of death. Immediately That's after Grenfell, bad. Ricky wrote a poem to try to make sense of what happened. Sorry. It's now been made into a video to get the message out further. One firefighter's feelings shared by many, no doubt, about the impact of the fire. I just felt broken, um, heartbroken by what had happened, heartbroken to think about the people that have suffered, um, heartbroken that I, I couldn't do more. So I don't think I'll ever um, sort of, you know, square Grenfell away as, oh, I'm fine about that. I will never be fine about it. Um, I don't think anyone will. Ricky, no.